Okay, so welcome to the Slovenian Pop Institute. I'm joined by Istok and we are we're going to get an explanation of how the hop breeding program works and how the institute support the farmers here in Slovenia. So it's really interesting to hear from you that there's 120 farmers in the country here and that you work personally and very closely with all of those farmers. Yep. That level of support must create some incredible quality products and that's what we're wanting to do today is to showcase Slovenian hops um, to our brewers and customers that are watching this feature. So. Tell us a little bit about the institute and how you support the hop farmers here. So uh, maybe to begin, uh, our institute originally was established by hop growers yeah. uh, 70 years ago because yeah. already at that time they knew that they need uh, some uh, input from the researchers uh, so that their quality, their product on the end would be of really high quality, suitable to be uh, sell in the global market yeah uh, yeah till 20 years ago they were still our owners we are now a governmental institute yeah. but still closely cooperating with uh, uh, with hop growers as yeah. you said in Slovenia we have around 120 of them yeah and um, actually we are trying to keep touch with them uh, actually in personal uh, level yeah. uh, every year through all the growing season so that uh, they can get all the important information which they need uh, to really to, to grow the best uh, quality uh, hops on yeah. the end. So you have analysis taking place in the fields from the soil, the water, the you know the yeah. Actually, we are covering all the, the all fields, agricultural fields, I would say. Yeah. So, uh, mm, composition of soil, yeah. uh, the um, assessment of uh, water supply, so uh, that we can advise when they have to start with the irrigation. Yeah. Uh, we can supply them with the information about the fertilization, okay. what they have to the, to add at what time. Um, also, of course. We are giving them the information about the pests and diseases in the environment yeah. so that uh, they can really apply the right pesticides at the right time, at the uh, right uh, I would say quantity, yeah. not to use it too much yeah. so that the product on the end, the plants on the fields are healthy yeah. and that the uh, concentration of these residues is not high. Yeah. Uh, but of course much much uh, lower than the allowed uh, limits are yeah so th there's a, a an importance put on to consistently making a high quality product with the support from you guys and novel flavors and new varieties are always coming into production and um, perhaps you give us a little insight into the process for developing a new hop how long does that take and hmm. you know can you Give us a few examples of su recent success stories. Mm. You know. Well, actually, from the seed to the plants uh, with the name, with the known uh, variety name, yeah. uh, it takes almost ten years. Wow! Yeah. Yeah, because uh, you know, you uh, it's hop is not like a potato. Yeah. You cannot uh, plant it every year. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, you have to wait for three years from the seed to get the first crop, to get the first. Uh, mm, cones yeah. when you could determine uh, what, are, what is the quality, uh, what are the characteristics of this, uh, of this new yeah. hops. And then of course there is the, again the field trials, the trials uh, of the, uh, whether the new breeding line is susceptible to diseases to pest, whether the, the quality is constant through the year, yeah. not only one year but Several to years. several years, yeah, uh, yeah, all that stuff. So on the end, uh, and then on the end, of course, you have to register it <laughs> yeah. in Slovenia and in uh, Brussels, yeah, um, in the level of EU. So it takes around ten, uh, ten years. Okay. Yeah, and uh, yeah, in last fifteen, uh, fifteen years, of course, uh, during the this craft brewers wave in the world, yeah. in the global market, 
We started also to breed with new hop varieties, which are uh, these things uh, from the traditional one, yeah. uh, but uh, they are known by their spe specific uh, aroma notes, like fruity, flowery, citrusy, yeah. uh, spicy. But, yeah. For me, I've, uh, like I've been promoting Slovenian hops for just around 10 years now, okay. and um, I always find really good success with Aurora as a really mellow, gentle bittering hop, yeah. you know, and yeah. but it's a it's a fine aroma hop as well. Yeah. Uh, we've had huge success in our local market with Styrian Goldens. Um, we notice it's used in lagers, it's used in Belgian beer styles, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, the new varieties that are coming through, they're more about aroma, as in like a fruit forward aroma, would that be fair to say? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, they're, they're, they all actually more or less have also quite high uh, uh, level of alpha acids. Okay. Yeah. Like Wolf can have uh, 15 or higher even. Yeah. But uh, with this new flavor varieties, actually, the bitterness is not the main uh, goal, uh, the main things the which you are aroma, looking. Yeah. Uh, but the, uh, this aroma, which is really specific and different from other uh, yeah. from other uh, varieties so that on the end also your beer will have uh, yeah, a specific aroma. Uh, aroma. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And is there anything that's came through the breeding program recently that you think is you know, a standout for you? As, you know, something that you would recommend the brewers to try? Uh, well, from the... Okay, we have two groups, as you said, the yeah. traditional ones and these new, more flavor ones. Yeah. From the traditional ones, uh, I would recommend, uh, as you already mentioned, Aurora, yeah. because its bitterness is really so gentle yeah. that uh, you can also combine Aurora with all other varieties, yeah. not to expect any problems uh, yeah. with the taste or something like that. And also, the aroma of Aroma is um, this really hoppy, fine uh, aroma. Yeah. So you can use it not just for the bitterness, but also in later editions for aroma. Uh, okay. If you want to get this hoppy aroma character. Yeah. And then of course, uh, Goldings, uh, like Celea, yeah. for example. Bobek also is quite interesting because it's, uh, although it's a traditional, part of traditional uh, hop varieties, yeah. it still have a little bit of uh, fruity notes uh, inside. Yeah. Um, while from these flavor ones, I don't know what do you like actually, <laughs> you know, because they are quite uh, different. different. We, we've um, had uh, great success with uh, Dragon um, blending it with some of the big American varieties. To obviously the brewers are trying to re reduce the price point on their hops. Yeah, of course, and, yeah. um, There's great value to be had with Slovenian hops, so they've been blending, say, Citra and Dragon or they Mosaic and Wolf and things like, and having really impressive results yeah. with it. You know. A big, a big thing for brewers, I've noticed, especially home brewers, they all want the latest harvest and they want it to be the freshest. But in my experience, it's been the case that sometimes previous harvest years can be better. You know, in terms of, uh, yeah, you know, the, the, the flavor profile, the consistency, just, you know, maybe there was a great harvest and it just really shined a light on that flavor and that hop that year. So my understanding is that hops are, they're sort of guaranteed for three years. But if they're in the right growing climate and the right storage, they're okay for five. Is that fair to say? If everything was okay on the field, so that the plants were healthy, yeah. uh, harvested at the right time, yeah. uh, properly dried. Yeah. Um, now it's very important that this hops is packed as soon as possible. Yeah. Uh, packed, that means that you remove the air, that means the oxygen, yeah. so you reduce the oxidation. Okay. Uh, this is very important and you have to do this as soon as possible after the harvest time. Okay. Yeah. And plus, uh, these hops then should be stored in a cold room. Yeah. Under the four under four degrees centigrade. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then you are you could be quite I would say uh, sure yeah. that your hop will keep the quality. Okay. Is it possible to explain some of the equipment that you use in the lab to analyze? Okay. They are. Uh, conductometers for uh, basic alpha analysis, for example. Yeah. Uh, 
pH meters, uh, um, drying chambers, of course, uh, and then uh, the beer analyzers to analyze uh, uh, alcohol extract, gravity, uh, yeah. CO2 content, foam stability, uh, yeah. all that stuff. Then there is uh, UVVs, uh, spectrophotometer, yeah. uh, for determination of, well, I would say all compounds that can uh, then can absorb the light. Okay. Um, that means the color of beer, for example, yeah. if you want to determine the polyphenols in, uh, in, um, in hops or hop storage index, yeah. you also need that kind of instrument. So, and in, in the, there's a lot of different departments in the Institute here, but you have your own pilot brewery, you have your own pilot hop farms, you have your own yeah. nur nursery for yeah. growing up. Yeah. And um, so very much a nose to tail approach of, you know, processing hops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And whenever you're developing a new hop variety, you're cross-pollinating. Is that done on the vine with a bag? I've yeah, seen it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, we have a special hop field, okay. which is, uh, of course, not in the valley. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, in one isolated place yeah. with the male uh, plant. Yeah. And uh, they collect the um, pollination there, pollen there. Yeah. And then, yeah. Take it to the field. Take it to the field and yeah. uh, do it manually, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. One thing that I want to highlight is not all hops are the same. So people that care about the agronomics and the disease and pest resistant crops, the fact that they work closely with the institutes, the fact that they lean on generations of knowledge and know-how to make sure that they consistently grow a premium quality product that ends up in the beers uh, via the brewers which we we work with for me it's really important about quality of hops and it's important to be involved in the selection of those hops at get a brood we're trusted by brewers all over the uk and ireland to come and source their hops so farmers we're working with here are getting the binds out of the field and into the processing facility within 30 minutes maximum they're then being processed, you know, night and day, basically, at the moment. And as the hops are processed, then they're taken straight to the processing plant. The bales are analyzed correctly, and what happens is they go straight into cold storage. That cold chain storage continues when it comes to get a brood. Then we pack them professionally in environment-proof packaging if we break them down, or we send them out in the original 5 kg or 10 kg packaging. What I want to highlight to you is this time of year is a beautiful time of year to visit the hop farms and immerse yourself in this experience. Lovely heat, lovely aromas, lovely sights with lovely people. We hope you enjoy the little series we have created here over the last few days of the hop harvest. And until next time, happy brewing. <laughs>